Let's get ready to talk sports, entertainment, and innovation. It's time for C Con Shorts. Welcome to the latest edition of Seacon Shorts. We have another exciting episode for you today. Uh, joining us, we have Dave Hansen, professional hockey player as well as star from the 1977 film Slapshot. We also have Christian Hansen, son of Dave Hansen, as well as former NHL player. And then lastly, we have our co-host Sean Garrity from Circle. Sean is dressed to impress today and ready to go and ready to tell stories about the Chiefs and and talk about Dave's experience both in the ring, uh, in, in the in the hockey ring, as well as uh, uh, in the in the movie the movie studio. So thank you everybody for joining us. Excited to kick this off today. This is a big one in the on the heels of Nancy Lieberman and Ralph Sampson. The, the stars are shining bright. Dave Christian, welcome. Sean, I'll kick it over to you. Welcome. Thanks so much, and thank you very much for joining us, Dave and Christian. Uh, really excited to have you both. And, uh, you know, you think about Ralph Sampson and uh, Nancy Lieberman, you know, how do you get better? And the bad news is there's someone following you. And I tell the people after you, it might as well be a four-year-old adorable child and a chimpanzee. Good luck. Uh, the Hansons are going to be tough to beat. Uh, and uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, Adam, uh, haven't had the pleasure of meeting uh, Dave, his beautiful wife, and uh, bragging about Christian and how amazing he is and learning more about Christian's career. Uh, really excited to have you on to celebrate, uh, obviously the, a lot of the people you brought joy and storytelling and connectivity, you know, as it's always mentioned, father, son, family, everybody connects to uh, the great uh, work you did on screen. And uh, I think the biggest thing is we talk about it for today, certainly it'd be nice to hear a little bit of a anecdote here or there, if there's something that you would like to talk about, but I think it's more important to talk about the Hanson family. And I think as you look at CCON with a lot of our speakers and thought leaders, uh, there are a lot of individual stories and, and expertise to be imparted upon others that we want to achieve. And uh, we we're very grateful when you agreed to be uh, part of our, our panels, Dave, talking about uh, the moment becomes you. You know, as you think about it, there are a lot of athletes and entertainers that have a great body of work, but some moment, whether it was a dance in the end zone or a part in a film or or a business venture, what have you, that starts to transcend beyond all the great things you've done in your overall body of work. So, uh, you know, again, grateful to have you both. And, uh, you know, Dave, as a father, as a, as a personality, an athlete, and a business person, very successful in today's world, we'd love to hear how you're doing and what you're up to right now. I'm actually doing pretty great. I'm living here in Pittsburgh, been here for you know, 25, 30 years now. Uh, raised my family here, working for Robert Morris University, uh, running a big sports complex for them and overseeing uh, a lot of the athletic parts of, uh, of their operation, being home for uh, an NCAA men's and women's hockey program. And we also are uh, practice and game facilities for a couple of the other NCAA sports that they, uh, that they have. So, you know, things are going great, living life and uh, relatively still healthy and keeping most of my hair. Uh, so, you know, all's good. Well, wonderful. Well, well, first of all, I, I know you've had a great career in the sports arena and the, in the sports business. And, uh, you know, I'm sure for all of us on this, uh, you know, on the discussion right now, we all are blessed enough to have children. And, you know, I know you have, you have a great son, Christian. We're very happy to have you, Christian. And obviously, you know, having your dad and a lot of the things you've had to put up with, through the years growing up and then obviously forging your own great career in sports and beyond. Uh, you know, how's it been growing up as the son of Dave Hansen and obviously finding your own space and kind of looking at people, not knowing even close to the percentage of how an amazing person your dad is. Uh, you know, how was that for you? It's been fantastic, Sean. It's kind of funny. People don't realize that I didn't really grow up with Slapshot in the house. It, it's not a movie that every Sunday the whole family would get around and sit and watch and recite lines. I imagine most of the people watching this podcast and at the convention will have watched Slapshot more than myself and my dad. I didn't see it until I was probably 
13 years old and I was on a youth hockey bus trip with two or three chaperones. My parents weren't even on the trip and one of the dads popped it in on the way back and I watched it and it was, uh, it was pretty eye opening to say the least because my dad's a pretty quiet and humble man off screen. And so when we pulled into the parking lot and I hopped in the car with my parents, the first thing I said was, Hey, we watched Slapshot. Both kind of were like, Oh crap. You know, it's the, uh, the birds and the bees talk in our household is about slap shot, not uh, not really the birds and the bees. So growing up, you know, he's dad. He's he's always been dad. But it's amazing because you go out and you can be anywhere and people just recognize him and he can just flip the switch and all of a sudden go into character mode. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And and by the way, uh, I know um, as you've grown up, uh, we'd love to learn more. I think our, our you know our audience would love to learn more about you. Know, your road, I know, from sports and business. What, what are you up to now? And uh, it'd be great for him to learn a little more about you, if you don't mind. So I stepped away from professional hockey after a seven-year career, and I found myself in the insurance industry. So I now work for a Lloyds of London cover holder based out of Toronto. Our company's name is Sutton Special Risk, and we write high-limit disability insurance for professional and top amateur athletes. Oh, wow. So when I graduated from Notre Dame, I had a degree in finance, played hockey for seven years. And then when I retired, I knew I wanted to find a way to stay involved in the game, but still use my business degree from Notre Dame. So this has been the perfect intersection of the two. It's It's been great. I've been doing it for coming on eight years now, and I've really enjoyed it. No, that's tremendous. And by the way, uh, I think uh, further discussion, that is a very important part of what we'll be doing at CECON. As you think about you know NIL and as, you know, athletes and protections, finance, et cetera. So we'll definitely want to uh, talk to you more about that because I think that's an important aspect that we're going to be covering. And uh, so, Dave, I, as you look at uh, uh, your business, I know one of the things that uh, uh, Christian has forced you to do, and I know you're pretty happy about it now, and I think it's also uh, it's important. You know, uh, you're using Cameo as a platform and you're able to, give uh, fans and enthusiasts the opportunity to engage with you, uh, continue to build that relationship. And I know, uh, look, uh, you're in business as a brand, and it's great to see that uh, the current tech platforms have allowed you to do that. Uh, uh, so that platform, uh, Christian, if you don't mind, uh, if people want to reach out to Dave and and see Dave, what, what would that platform be again? That's Cameo. It's Cameo.com slash Dave Hansen 16. Wonderful. Thank you. And and Adam, I know uh, from your background in sports entertainment and in, in valuations of brands and revenues, as you think about the Hansons, the three Hanson brothers coming out of high school, playing collegiate hockey and moving on, what would their NIL value be in today's world? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously di diff different world coming from, you know, playing hockey in the in the 60s and 70s to this whole new era of, of social media. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of an easy out on this one, Sean. I, I don't think I can give you a, an official number on this one because there's no comps. Um, but what I'd say is, Dave, you know, if you and your brothers are having a strong social media following and publishing out, engaging, compelling content, building your audience and your fan base that way, you know, you're definitely looking at a, at a, at a pretty strong NIL value. Uh, you know, some of the sports outside of football and basketball don't necessarily yield as much uh, revenue generation, but I think with your background and how everybody knows you and, uh, you know, great, great, uh, you know, great, great feelings, uh, sentiment around the, the industry and around the world. I, I think you'd, you'd definitely be looking at a, at a seven figure annual NIL valuation. Well, I would say this, you know, you look at a lot of the top revenue generators in uh, college sports, they're women, you know, rightfully so, but uh, some of them, it's not even for their on court uh, abilities, it's their persona. And yeah. uh, you have a lot of very savvy uh, young student athlete entrepreneurs that have understood how to market their brand, uh, and then obviously coinciding that with the fact that they're student athletes. And Adam, I'm going to let you off the hook for that for the Fair. moment. But <laughs> at Decon on the panel, I want to make sure that with Christian and you know, mom's going to be there, as I understand it. I hope Dave, uh, mom has wants and needs, and we're going to talk about how we build up the Hanson brand in advance of Decon, and we. Uh, we talk about how that brand can amplify itself and have its next phase of uh, revenue generation. So pressure's on you on that. Fair, fair enough. And Christian, one thing I just wanted to add is, you know, we did hear that you went to Notre Dame and we still like you. So I'll be continuing with the, with the podcast. Sean, I, I went to Syracuse, Dad. So we took everybody. Either love you or you hate them. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, by the way, Jay Vickers, uh, who's uh, our esteemed colleague on the UNLV side of the equation, uh, was a Lou Holtz running back back in the day uh, out of Tallahassee, Florida. Back. He is awesome. very proud Irish, so you do have allies in the tent. Uh, now, by the way, uh, Dave, most people don't know this, but Syracuse has its tie into uh, Slapshot, correct? Is that yeah. right? Syracuse War Memorial was where some of that sh- – uh, uh, Brock, the, the principal yeah. filming occurred. Yeah, we did the majority of our filming in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, but we then, you know, ventured out for a couple of weeks into Syracuse into the uh, Ana, Anadaga War Memorial, I think yeah. it's called, maybe it's still called it, I'm not sure. Yeah. But we filmed there and we went off to the Utica War Memorial as well, and then even down to Colgate College and filmed there. But yeah, the old uh, Syracuse uh, arena was quite the haven for uh, some really old-time hockey. We played some hockey there in real life, and they felt it was important to maintain that flavor and bring us back in, in the town there. So it was – I've had some uh, interesting times in Syracuse in the real life and then certainly some interesting times than when we filmed the, the movie there. So it was, it was a good time there. Yep, so Syracuse is tied in. No, it's tremendous. And uh, I think we have the Syracuse Crunch. Does the Syracuse Crunch play there, Adam? Yes. I- they still do, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, I remember when uh, when Paul Newman passed away, they actually retired old Reggie Dunlap's number nine jersey. They hung him into the rafters at the Syracuse game. Well, appro- appropriately so. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, look from from the standpoint of uh, uh, the importance of work that you do. I'm sure at the time when you were you were brought on to do it, I know you talked a little bit about uh, the call to have the opportunity to do that. I'm sure you had no idea. And probably the the producers, directors as well, probably didn't understand the the iconic uh, importance that the, your work would take on and the generational uh, uh, connectivity that it's carried. I can, when you got the call, uh, how, how did that come about, Dave, if you don't mind? Uh, well, the short favorite. version of that, yeah, that story simply is we were, I was a minor league team. I was on a pro contract for a team in Minnesota, the Minnesota Fighting Saints of the World Hockey Association, which was a rival league of the National Hockey League at the time. And their farm team was in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And that's where we were. So I was playing hockey down there, myself and three brothers, Jeff, Jack, and Steve Carlson out of, uh, the Iron Range of Northern Minnesota. We all were Minnesota boys, but right. And so there was uh, there was a player on our team, Ned Dowd, who was uh, the contract with St. Louis, and he had a sister who was a screenplay writer out in California. And one night, as Ned would say, uh, he was on the phone to her. I'm sure knowing Ned at the time and a little bit of a drunken stupor, but <laughs> I was on the phone talking to her out west. She's out west and. He started telling her all about the team and the players on the team and the, the team in the town and the mills are closing and the team's being sold and on and on. And she uh, she kind of found the story kind of intriguing and she said, well, I'm going to come out and visit you for a couple of weeks. And she did and found it even more intriguing. And, and as a result, uh, the light went off in her head and over the that season, between herself and Ned, her brother, sending little tape recordings of daily episodes uh, that was going on in real life. She put together this incredible script, pitched it to Universal Studios. They bought it and started casting characters to do the role. So they, you know, they, when they, obviously they landed Newman, uh, but they were trying to get guys like Nick Nolte and John Travolta and Donnie Most and Peter Strauss and all these A-listed actors to play these main characters but they couldn't skate they they even had ned ned my teammate go out and try to teach these guys how to skate so they could play the roles and and they couldn't they were breaking ankles and busting shoulders and cracking heads you know (laughs) and i think it was ned that made the suggestion why don't you just go back to johnstown since you wrote a script about three brothers and you got a guy by the name of killer carlson in there which is which is you know somebody based on real life and and let these guys try it. And they did. They came back. And uh, at the time, one of the brothers was actually up in Edmonton playing. So they had Jeff, Jack, and myself read the part for the, car, for the Hanson brothers and, uh, and just said, well, this is the best we got, so let's go with it. And that was kind of it. They went with it. So the three of us played those guys, and they brought in an actor to play the Killer Carlson role. And 
that was kind of nut it in a nutshell. Then you know we started filming. We actually started filming while we were still in the playoffs. We were still playing games and filming at the same time. And then once the season was over, it was it was you know a full ride right for the next wow. three months. Dad, tell him about when Paul Newman first showed up to town. You were taking your pregame nap. Yeah, well, yeah. So my first introduction to Paul Newman was simply I'm having a pregame nap in my apartment, and I'm hearing a knock on the door, and I wake up and I get up and you know with my dirty socks on and my underwear and a little ticked off and drowsy, and I fling the door open and I see this guy standing in front of me. He looks just like Paul Newman. And he sticks his hand. I says, "Hi, I'm Paul Newman," and I says, "Well, you sure are." Dave, and what do you want? I'm kind of taking a nap. He says, oh, I'm sorry, you know, but we want to see what a hockey player's apartment looks like. Do you mind if we come in? I says, come on in. I'm going back to bed. Just close the door behind you. And he says, well, the art guys want to take a walk around. Do you mind if I go watch TV a little bit? There's a race on. I says, no, go ahead. You know, there's a TV. And then he says, well, do you got any beer in the fridge? I said, yeah, the fridge is over there. You know, drink as much as you want. Just make sure you close the door when you leave so I can get back to sleep and don't have to worry about you know, the neighbors coming in. So that that was my great introduction to Paul and, and actually started a, a pretty good friendship with the guy. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Thanks for teeing that up, Christian. Yeah, and uh, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to live not too far down the road in Connecticut for a period of time with right. Paul. And, and uh, yeah, everything that I've heard – uh, from anyone I've ever talked to is that he is such a good man. You know, he, they were, they were an amazingly generous family, obviously through, yeah. you know, Newman's own and all the things they did. But, uh, you know, he, I've always heard he was a, a really great person to be around and to work with. Yeah. He, I tell people, if you didn't know, if, if you didn't know that he was the super movie star of the set, you would have thought he was just a, you know, one of the guys and you know, walking around because he was so unassuming uh friendly to everybody um until he got in front of that camera and then you saw you know this guy is the pro he knows what the hell he's doing and, and but just a spectacular wonderful man one of one of the nicest most generous people i can honestly say i've ever met in my life oh, that's great uh, i have a, a buddy of mine that went to syracuse his name's charlie i can't say more than that he was former goldman sachs very successful guy he gets on the plane first class uh, kind of recognized the guy next to him. He's reading, and I was like, he kind of looked at him again, like he thought maybe he knew him in business or something. And this guy doesn't care about anybody; uh, doesn't have to. And the guy doesn't even look up with his glasses. Reading says, "I'm sorry, I don't talk on flights." And he said, "Well, if you ask me, you already said too much." And the guy started laughing his ass off, and it was Paul Newman. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that's good. But uh, it was one of the best one-liners I ever heard. Uh, yeah. So, Christian, what what are we missing here? It's kind of a a last thought. You have the last word on your dad and the whole uh, story. What, what, what would you like to share? I think the last word, Sean, is the movie was made in 1977, and it's as popular today as it's ever been. You know, my dad, two weeks ago, was just up in the Quebec Major Junior League doing a tour with three teams, and he said he had no idea what anybody said because they were all in French the entire time, but when he walked away, from the weekend, the promoters that brought him in said it was one of the best, one of the best events that they've ever had. The Penguins a few years ago did a 1970s night, and they brought my dad in to sign autographs. And they actually had to cut him off, cut the line off halfway, I think halfway through the third period, because they're going to have to get everybody out of the arena at the end of the game. Because my dad was, you know, the line for the autographs was still going. We've been to Australia, we've been to Europe. We've been to Norway. Uh, I played my last year of pro hockey over in Norway. And at the end of the season, my parents came over for the championship. And we had about two days afterwards. So we zipped down to Italy just to do some sightseeing. We just went to Rome. We did a day at the Vatican. And then we did a day on the hop-on, hop-off buses, just kind of wandering around. It was myself, my dad, and my mom, just the three of us. So at the end of the second night, we're sitting on this rinky-dinky side road cafe. It's just our table and one table you know, 10 feet behind us, these two guys sitting there having dinner and and my mom goes, isn't this nice? My dad goes, yeah, yeah. Th you know, this has been a great trip. She goes, no, th this has been fantastic. You know, for two and a half days, nobody's bothered you. you know, we've been able just to go around, walk around, see all the sites, do our own thing. And my dad goes, yeah. I kid you not, Sean, five minutes later, the table, 10 feet behind us, they get up, they go walking by the two guys. The one turns around, Looks at my dad, looks at the other guy. He goes, I told you that's Dave Hansen from Slapshot. My mom goes, I thought it did. 
Right. But it, it's the truth, you know, and and it's all great. He's raised yeah. millions of dollars for charity. Um, the messages that we get from people on Cameo just saying how he's brightened, you know, their father's day who's battling an illness or, you know, a family member who's going through tough times that they haven't seen him smile like that in a year. So it, it's just been fantastic. That's something that he made almost 50 years ago to this day is still as popular as it is and has able to you know, bring delight to so many people and, and raise so much money. No, that's, that's a tremendous story. And, and I think that's really all the good stuff. Uh, and I will warn you, Christian and, uh, and Dave, you know, with Brandon Steiner, uh, you know, he did very successfully grow and sell his business. Fanatics uh, acquired his business, but he's gone into a whole nother uh, business of collectibles. And, uh, and he also has an eBay live streaming auction that he's doing with uh, signings and memorabilia, things of that nature. So uh, we did have a little bit of a conversation yesterday about this amazing roster of people like yourselves that will be there. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, there might be a signing somewhere in the mix with uh, a lot of the great people we're going to have out there. So uh, uh, at least don't let your hand get too uh, too relaxed. You might, we might need to get you. Not that's still in shape anymore on me is my hand. <laughs> well perfect uh well again uh so grateful to have you both adam uh you've been listening here any any thoughts you want to add or any questions last thoughts i just have one more question for christian i think some of our younger audience would be interested in just knowing that you you were playing up until uh a few years back who was the best player you ever played against i ever played against uh sydney crosby wow yeah. okay that yeah, was no. yeah sydney crosby I, I was lucky to play i've played against I think Sid. I think Sid's one of the top five players of all time. I really do, and you know, I, I, and that's not a knock. You know, I, I played in training camp with Ovechkin, played against Alexei Kovalev, um, mm-hmm. but I think Sidney Crosby just hands down is one of the best players in the game. That's amazing. How about you, Dave? Best player I ever played against? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I, you know, when I played, it was in an era where you had. Gordie Howe and Bobby Orr and Bobby Hall and Frank Mahovlich, you know, some of those guys I played with and played against. Probably the one after, I, I don't know, I mean, it's Gordie Howe, you know. Yeah. How, how can you not say Gordie Howe, Mr. Hockey? Uh, even at his age, I think he was his late 40s, early 50s, and the stuff he did and the respect he had and, and earned. You know, puts him at the top of my list would be Gordy. Those are those are those are great players, and that's coming from a Rangers fan. So there you yeah. go. There, there you go. Uh, All right, no. Chris, you have some of our partners and some of them that are Norwegian, et cetera, and they want to know if you're married. What's the story? I'm not not married. Uh-oh. No. Uh oh. Well, well we're going to Vegas and you know, he's got to find one of those Norwegian Viking women, you know, to keep the family line going here. Well, uh, I would tell you, uh, my son, my children are descendants of the Berserker tribe of the Vikings. Oh, awesome. Wait a minute. How did I end up not only with Norwegians, but the Berserker tribe? You mean you're the crazy Vikings? <laughs> <laughs> so get ready. You're going to have some pretty enthusiastic uh, uh, professionals, meaning our partners, not the pros. But uh, uh, again, really hope you can join us. Uh, we are so grateful to have this time with you. I know our our, our people will be coming, and you know, obviously we're speaking to the world out there. Uh, they want to know about you. They care about you, and uh, uh, you have a lot of people that uh, admire and appreciate your work. So uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we will see you in Las Vegas, July 15th to 17th at Seacon at the Virgin Hotels in Las Vegas. So uh, if anybody would like to learn more about it, it's sei-con.org, Seacon, the Sports Entertainment Innovation Conference. And because the Hansons will be there, it'll be the best thing ever. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Sean. Thanks, Adam. Look forward to it.